This is one of my favorite dance tunes to play on the banjo. I'm in the key of A, open G tuning, capo two, or just tuned up A, E, A, C sharp, E. This tune's called Half Past Four. It's one that I've recorded with my father, and we play it at many dances and jams. It's a great one to kick the energy up. It's a two-part tune, A, A, B, B form, and this is a very melodic tune. So if you're looking for a tune that will have quite a bit of melody in this claw hammer style, this is the tune for you. It's got a lot of eighth notes, a lot of interesting drop thumb, off string pull off, slides, hammer ons. It's got all the cool melodic tricks that we use to pull out an intricate melody out of claw hammer banjo. And it's a ton of fun. Let's dive right in. This is the A part breakdown of half past four. So we're using a mini bar on this first set of strings, first and second string, index finger, press down on that fifth fret. And you wanna be pressing down pretty hard so that you get a nice clear tone. On both of those strings, we're gonna use a drop thumb right off the bat. First string, fifth fret, drop thumb down to that second string, seventh fret with your ring finger. And this passage sounds like this. That's the first little bit of the tune. So we enter into this melody with that drop thumb. Fifth fret, first string, seventh fret, second string. And then we go into a hammer on five to seven on that first string. So, and then drop thumb again. But this time, using our bar chord, fifth fret on the first string, fifth fret on the second string. Followed by drop thumb, one to two. There we go. A lot of drop thumb here. So drop thumb, hammer on. Now there are other ways to play this melody. You could go using some pull offs and hammer ons, but I find that using my mini bar chord here, I don't have to move as much with my hand. Once I get it in this little position, I can get that melody pulled out of the instrument pretty quickly. And I will say you want to make sure that you're really pressing down hard here. You maintain tension in your right hand. When you start to play intricate melodies like this, starting to venture up the neck, it's important that you really press down firmly on that first string and second string. Play right behind the frets. That's where you're gonna get a nice clear tone. Notice how I'm right behind that seventh fret and right behind that fifth fret. That's where you're gonna get a nice clear sound. If you're just a little back, you'll get that little buzzy sound or a muted sound. You have to be right behind that fret. Okay, that's the first measure of the tune. Might as well play that a few times before you move on. Once you have it, here's the next bit. So this is out of a C shape position, D chord in the key of A, but it's our four chord, our C shape, if we were in G tuning. So we have. So we're playing the second string with that C position down, and then you pull off the first string. That's called an off string pull off. Notice how when I play that second string, first fret, my ring finger is already down on that first string. And then I do drop thumb, one to two. Get that finger right back down. And then one, two, three, open strings. So. passage. So those two pieces together.
again. Definitely an intricate melody on Clawhammer, and it's super fun to play once you get it up to speed. Definitely takes some practice though, getting those little melodic di uh, melodic sections down into your muscle memory. Okay, the next part basically starts with the same little melodic phrase. Uh, it's it's starting on that fifth fret first string mini bar chord again. But this time, instead of doing drop thumb at the end, you just play your open first string. Instead of going, we're gonna go. walk up that first string, pull off, fourth fret, and then fifth fret for a ditty. So pull off, two to open, fourth fret, followed by your drone on the fifth, and then a bum ditty on that fifth fret first string. And for a more complete A chord, I'll put that index finger down on the third fret of the second string. So you could also do a slide. That sounds pretty nice as well. Either one of those options is fine. So you have and then it starts over. But that time no drop thumb on that second string. And then up to that fifth fret. So that whole first line, here it is. Here's the next part of the tune. Really cool melody. It's going into our flat seven chord, which would be our F shape. Or in this case, the key of A, that would be a G chord, but our F shape. But instead of finding the melody down in this position, we're gonna find it a little bit further up the neck in this little position, which I'll show you here. So we're playing the sixth fret of the second string, and we're using our fifth string as a melody note. This happens every now and then with claw hammer when we're playing intricate melodies. So, so we're playing that second string, sixth fret, and then that seventh fret on the first string with drone notes, in this case, melody notes on that fifth string. And you can just leave this little shape down. Sixth fret with your middle, seventh fret with your ring. And then we're playing third fret, first string, fifth fret, second string. Drop thumb three, five, and then drop thumb open, open on those top two strings. Cool melody. And then we go into essentially the same phrase from earlier. That off string pull off passage. So we have. intricate melody, these are quarter notes, third string, second string, first fret, second string, and then open second string. So again, that's, and then pull off, and then slide two to four, open bum ditty. Really standard ending, so that whole ending phrase. Last line of the A part. Nice. It's really important that you're using the correct
perfect fingering for this passage. As you play more intricate melodies on claw hammer, efficient fingering is paramount. And then transitioning to those other positions at the right time. So when you finish this little phrase, get that index finger down on that first string, third fret, and then that ring finger down, fifth fret, second string. You don't necessarily need to have those entire shapes down all at once. You can play the first note of the phrase, so get that sixth fret down, and then the seventh fret, and then same with this idea here, third fret, and then your ring finger. You have a, just a little bit of time to get it down, so you don't need to get that shape down and then that shape down all at the same time. You can kind of build it. And then the ending. So here is the whole A part of half past four, nice and slow. Play along, give you two beats. One, two. That's the A part of half past four. Let's move on to the B part. Here's the B part breakdown of half past four. I'll play it nice and slow for you, then we'll break it down. right off the bat this melody is quite a bit simpler than the A part it's more based in quarter notes rather than a string of eighth notes it's a, a nice catchy melody that I think you'll get stuck in your head as we learn this so here is the B part which is similar to the ending of that A part we have open third open second first fret second string and then open second string and then and this is essentially working within our D chord shape if you don't know this shape it's super useful as your complete D chord fourth fret second fret third fret and fourth fret that fifth string adds some nice dissonance as it's not in a D chord of course we're in the key of A so this D shape is now an E chord. It's our five chord in the key of A, also known as our D shape. So we're basically playing within this shape here. So pull off two to open, and then fourth fret on that fourth string. And you can essentially use this chord shape and play bum ditties. You could go, oops. As long as you're staying within that D chord shape, you'll be good there. We have. And then here's the next part. Same ending from the A part, so that's convenient. Here's the next little bit. This time we go right into our D chord for a bum ditty. I'll follow that up with a drop thumb, so bum diddy, one, two, one, five, so we have bum diddy, drop thumb, and then a slide, one to three on that second string for a diddy, and then two to four on that third string for a diddy, so Same ending that we used 
earlier in the tune. So we have slide, slide, pull off, slide, and then a third string bum ditty. So that whole B part, I know I went through that quickly, I think you'll get this. But I'd like to show you another way of playing this B part further up the neck. And this is one that if you play up the neck a little bit already, you'll find it quite familiar because we're using our X, that magic X that we talk about here on Claw Hammer Corner. It's this pattern. We're centered around this eighth fret on the second string. That's our A note. And we don't have to venture beyond this little area for much of this B part, which sounds like this. part of half past four and we're using this little position eighth fret second string ninth fret first string with our middle finger and our ring finger and then we have our index finger back here on that seventh fret we're going to use that note as well so we have so we're going second string first string first string again but this time with our pinky going down on the tenth fret and back to that ninth fret, so. And this is a bar chord across that seventh fret. That's our five chord, our E chord. Same as this chord. This passage. We're replicating that up the neck. So we have. And then drop them. One, two, three. One, two, three. a little bit. So instead of doing two drop thumb patterns, we're just going to go right back into that A chord shape, that mini A chord where we have the 8th fret and ninth fret down. So we have and then here's the next bit. We're going to go right into that phrase again. But this time we go up to the 12th fret for a bum ditty, the 9th fret for a bum ditty, and then. So that's a hammer on 5, 7 to 9, rather. Back to the 7th fret, and then a bum ditty on that 2nd string 8th fret. So. So we're going for that ending of the B part up the neck. So we go for the whole part. sometimes I'll slide up to that 12th fret that'll buy me some time to get up there there you go that's a nice variation for the up the neck version of the B part
Let's play this whole tune, half past four, nice and slow. I'll go up the neck in the B part during the second time through the tune. Here's half past four. One, two, ready, here we go. some variation ideas for half past four. It's really tempting to strip away some of this melody and play a more chord-based approach in the A part of this tune. Instead of playing all of those melody notes, you could do something a little bit simpler like this. Where you're rooting your foundation of this tune more in the chord. So you have your one chord, you can just play a bum ditty. And a pull off, second fret of the first string, down to that second string, so. And then you can play a bum ditty of your four chord. And then your drop thumb, so you're stripping away bits of the melody and playing more of the chords, so your one chord, your four chord, and then That's more or less the way we played it before. Instead of playing this part, you could just go. I'm playing my F chord or my G chord here in the key of A. Down to your C shape or your D chord in the key of A. I'm just doing a bum ditty and drop thumb phrase. And then you could play your standard ending. Or you could use one of those go-to endings that I like to use, something like this. A great spot for that fancy ending. Nine triplet pull off. So you have, instead of what we played earlier, you could go. Especially if you 
don't want to play the melody the whole time when you're playing with somebody else who maybe is carrying the melody like a fiddle or maybe a mandolin player or someone who's got the tune you don't necessarily need to play the full melody note for note with them. It's nice to play a more chord-based approach at times. And when we're looking at variations, it's not always about adding in more notes, but finding ways to remove notes from the tune to create more space. And that can open up doors for other variation ideas like hammer-ons when you're playing a chord or slides. You don't always have to just add in more drop thumb or more intricate melodic patterns. This tune is already busy enough. ideas for a part variations in half past four. Here's a cool drop thumb variation to think about for the B part of half past four. Most of this B part is rooted in quarter note melody patterns. So we have for that first part of the B. Instead you could go Notice how I threw in some drop thumbs there on that open third string as a nice rhythmic counterpoint. spots so third string and then our second string open followed by our third string with drop thumb you could add in more of those if you'd like so now I'm using it on every other beat in that first line slides, instead of doing a ditty, I'm going just doing a drop thumb on the string below. So I'm going slide, one, two, drop thumb, slide, two, three, drop thumb. So I'm removing some of these strums and replacing them with a drop thumb. It really creates this nice rhythmic counterpoint. I use these kind of things all over the place when I'm playing banjo and want a more rhythmic, punchy sound. those drop thumbs instead of the ditties and not just on the first and second string but using them on those inside strings as well really creates a nice rhythmic opportunity for you here in half past four and many other tunes <laughs> 